All right, guys, it's a new format, and that means new meta decks. We just got a ban list, and the big news is that Firewall Dragon got banned. You can check out my thoughts about that in a video I did just recently. But today, I want to share what I think will be the top five meta decks in this upcoming format. Now, this mostly just applies to December, of course. This is, you know, with the current slew of decks we have, the current card pool that's available. Things will, of course, change in January. We've got a couple of new sets and products coming out then. But for now, these are the decks that I think will have the best chance at competition and why. So number five is gonna be Trick Stars. This deck had fallen off for a bit because it's a great deck, but the thing is with the FTKs and with the extra link decks and everything like that, I feel like Trick Stars just got very easily overwhelmed. And that's always kind of been one of their weaknesses is that the deck does a lot of great ship damage and it's a really strong controlled deck, but it's kind of low offense. The monsters are small. They don't put out a whole lot of damage each turn, they like give or take. But with a lot of these, in my opinion, kind of degenerate extra deck, you know, extra link combos and FTKs largely out of the way, I think the Trickstar stand a much better chance. And they actually had, they kind of had been having like a resurgence in the last few weeks, even just leading up to this ban list, getting a few more like tops and more representation than usual at some regionals at the last few YCSs like Pasadena. So I'm interested in seeing it sort of flourish now that everything else is sort of gone. This deck's strengths, of course, include the chip damage factor. Trickstar Reincarnation does still exist. People don't talk about it as much, but it's still a very powerful card. Uh, the hand traps this deck can run, it can effectively shut out any deck with the right, you know, combination of hand traps, and it can run them all very easily. And it leaves plenty of room for techs. I mean, you, you see this, of course, tech with like Sky Strikers, I've seen it with Mech Knights, I've seen it with Wind Witches. And there's other hybrids too. Artifacts, that's another one that's really new. So I definitely think Trick Stars are, they're, they're number five on my list. Number four is actually the Rongo Minion and Gumblar Turbo decks. So even though Firewall Dragon's banned and it does severely cripple the sort of just dark warrior link strategy and Legoki strategy, I think that Rongo Turbo is largely unaffected by that. And uh, Gumblar Turbo is more affected, but I've already seen videos of people just turboing it out anyway and taking people's hand away. I also know that this deck is going to be getting the new Neospatian monster later in the week, the um, Neospace connector that can summon Aqua Dolphin from the deck, and so that's going to be a popular card in this deck in particular because you can actually get like two cards out of your opponent's hand very easily each turn, and you can also use Gumblar. Uh, there's a whole different conversation about whether or not Gumblar and Rongo Minion need to be banned. I think that you know, with some luck, they'll be next up on the list. They're not really cards people like fighting against. They're not very fun. Uh, but you know, I'll take what I can get. Firewall's at least gone. I still think these decks will be good. I think that they'll be fragile. I think they'll definitely be kind of glass cannons of sorts. If you can stop them, then that's usually going to be their strategy. But I think that early on, they'll probably be more popular than something like maybe Trick Stars, just because they do give you more of an instant win factor. You know, stopping your opponent from playing is a lot stronger than just hoping to kill them with chip damage. So for better or worse, these two decks will probably both be popular for the next few weeks. Number three is Altergeist. So Altergeist had fallen off again because of FTKs, because of extra links. They didn't get time to set up, they didn't get time to play. But Altergeist still have a lot of the same strengths and now they're better positioned to actually make a splash and make an impact. Because Altergeist use trap cards, they use plenty of floodgates, there's anti-spell fragrance, there's um, you know rivalry, Gozen. Well, they don't really like to use Gozen, they use rivalry. And you know they can use any other floodgates they want to use. Multi Faker is still a really good card. They get some hollow printings in the next OTS pack for, I don't think that makes the deck any better, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, I think this deck will be really strong. And because of the nature of the deck, it actually counters Thunder Dragons, which hint, hint, later on the list. Um, so I mean, it's got a pretty strong matchup against that. It does decently against Sky Strikers, which hint, hint, is later on the list. But I think that it also is better than the decks lower than it. I think that in a long extended games, Altergeist tend to win out in the end, and it's not a really expensive deck outside of like one or two cards, so something a lot of people have, I think it'll be popular for those reasons. Deck number two, Thunder Dragons. So this deck, in my opinion, kind of didn't really get to shine. It came out at a really bad time. It came out at a time when, like every other deck on this list, better, more broken strategies existed, and so it just wasn't able to make a splash. Literally the first event that it was legal at is the same event where the Dark World FTK debuted, so it's like, mm. But I think that now Thunder Dragons actually stand a really good chance in the meta. They've been almost rogue up to now, 
But with Sky Strikers being inevitably the best deck of the format, I think that Thunder Dragons, a deck that has a pretty good matchup against Sky Strikers, being able to shut out a lot of their search cards and being pretty resilient to removal, will actually stand a pretty good chance. And it still does well against most of the decks underneath it. Um, it's got a pretty good Trick Star matchup. It's got a pretty good matchup against most combo decks. Uh, Altergeist do give it some trouble, but that's something that now that you know that's the one matchup to worry about, you don't have to worry about all these FTKs, it means you can actually, as a Thunder Dragon player, prepare better for Altergeist. And I think I'm interested in really seeing how that develops. So I definitely would call Thunder Dragons the number two pick. They can be combined with a lot of things really easily. We've seen you know, the Brilliant Fusion variant of it. We've seen the new Dinosaur variant of it. So that's going to be really cool. I want to know where that goes. But yeah, uh, it's definitely number two, for me at least. And deck number one is Sky Strikers, which shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody. I think that Sky Strikers kind of had already proven themselves to be the best deck in the format, but between all of the Link shenanigans, it was hard to necessarily call it. Now I think for sure it's the best deck. And I'm okay with that. I think that Sky Strikers are really good and maybe not always fun to play against, but a lot more fair than, you know, having your hand looped away, getting extra linked, getting burn FTK'd. I'd rather play against Sky Strikers. Now, don't get me wrong, they're really annoying. Like, I mean, it's a really great deck that can grind forever and Widow Anchor and Engage are like, uh, they're trigger words for me sometimes. But playing against this deck is far more manageable than that. And, you know, if it is the best deck in the format and it's like a solid thing and people don't have to commit so many like hand traps and stuff to Firewall Dragon, then maybe people can just counter this deck. You know, maybe we will see a rise in anti Sky Striker technology. Maybe more decks that try to use anti spell fragments or other anti spell type cards. We can see more kaijus because that can be a pretty good counter to this deck, sort of. So I'm interested in where this goes if this deck maintains its top spot for the next month or so. And then if the deck decides to, you know, if Konami decides to hit the deck in January, like, who knows? We'll see. So, those are the five decks that I think have the best competitive chances in tournaments in the metagame right now, as of just December 2018. Like I said before, a lot can change, and a lot probably will change, and this might not be the right list, it's just my intuition. So of course, I'd like to hear from you guys. Let me know down in the comments what decks do you think are going to dominate the meta, why, how do you see it changing. Tell me all of that in the comments below. I'll try to be responding and reading and stuff like that. I'm also going to make another video about the rogue decks to the format, so be on the lookout for it. And without further ado, I will see you guys in the next one.